Lucille Ball was a very sophisticated lady as far as the American television entertainment show is concerned. She was funny, very lovely and lively, generous and perhaps a conundrum of the womanhood. You may have known her as the famous America's sweetheart, but her road to stardom was not an easy one, not with the recent revelation that depicts her as a lady who emerged from a life of early trauma and fought her way through to fame including using the only tool available to her, her body, doing turning tricks and Hollywood casting couches. How Lucille Ball made her career through her bedroom. There is no gainsaying of the enormous impact left behind by the legendary Lucille Ball, one powerful lady who took the entertainment industry by storm rising from nobody, to become one of the most iconic images of American TV shows. Her legacy as a prolific performer in the world of television entertainment remained unmatched for generations to come. The actress and comedian is no doubt an innovator in many ways. Her exceptional footprint as a daring woman in comedy, and having history to her side as one of the first women to perform while visibly heavy with a child on television, is something worthy of commendation. With creativity and avid energy, Lucille Ball normalised an interracial marriage to all and sundry and projected an aura of boldness, which happened to be one of her remarkable hallmarks as one of Hollywood's most cherished talents of all time. Described as one of the funniest and most celebrated women in America, Lucille Ball, with her 1950s sitcom I Love Lucille, was able to pull about 60 million viewers and became part of the country's cultural chromosome. But beyond her fame, who is Lucille Ball? And how did she rise to fame? This question is as interesting as her scandalous early life. Would it surprise you to learn that the I Love Lucille sensation once posed clothless in a photograph? It is no longer debatable that she had a not too palatable childhood that she left behind to pursue a life of fame. It became obvious that much younger Lucille was determined to be great even if it meant selling her body and yielding to Hollywood casting couches. I guess all that was put behind when fortune smiled on her. Before Lucille Ball got her stardom and became a legend, according to a recent document, she had to mingle with gangsters and even played sensual photos. Quite a remarkable lady, I must say. Lucille Ball's charisma is very inspirational because to consolidate her fame she had to put up with her husband, Desi Arnaz's philandering for years. She endured to the extent of seeing her husband cheat on her with two cool girls simultaneously. He didn't deny that, but claimed, My fooling around with some cheap girls don't count. Lucille Ball was quoted talking about her husband's infidelity. Lucille Ball and her charming husband, Desi Arnaz, were said to have connected in 1940 at RKO Pictures, and years later these fun-loving couple with their show together had thrilled the American audience as a madcap and blissful couple, but behind the scenes their marital life was bedeviled with adulterous affairs and several scandalous lifestyles. At this time I'm particularly interested in the hurdles and difficult terrain that young Lucille Ball had to go through to become the icon that everyone now admired. She was born in 1911 somewhere in Jamestown, New York, Little Lucille, if I may say, seems to have greatness written in her subconscious mind, with her early desire to be a performer, even though several circumstances made life miserable. One of these is the shocking death of her father, when she was almost four years. Lucille Ball was remarkable for her smart comedic abilities, but how she developed such a talent is quite interesting, considering that she didn't experience much joy as a child, occasioned by how she was raised. After her father's demise, little Lucille found herself living with her grandparents when her mother remarried. Years after, she recalls her childhood life under constant punishment. Her guardians were strict and had what she described as old country ideas. They treated other children the way I wanted to be treated, but not me. Some they did to discipline her, which she said was the wrong way to bring up a child. The experience was quite horrible because she got a full dose of childhood punishment that would later inspire her comic talent. That early feeling of frustration and the desire to please those she was living with helped her discover the quickest and easiest way to what would make people laugh, 
Luckily, her school principal saw the talent in her, and in short she took part in school musicals and dramas. Her step-parents also gave her the green light in that regard. At a tender age, she developed a full interest in acting and began taking lessons in New York City. Teenage Lucille crossed negative paths with fellow student Betty Davis, who she thought was arrogant and intimidating. Learning dance under Martha Graham was another nightmare for Lucille Ball, as Graham had asked her to vacate the class because she was performing badly. You're hopeless as a dancer. You're like a quarterback taking ballet. Find work as a soda jerk, Graham was quoted to have said to her. At sixteen, an ugly incident occurred in her family when what was meant to be a birthday present to her brother Freddie ended up wrecking Lucille Ball's step-parents financially. Reports say a bullet was accidentally fired at a neighbour's child who later sued her step-parents and ensured that they spent the last coin in their possession. They took our house, the furnishings, everything. My grandfather never worked again, Lucille explained that he could not recover from the trauma. That incident left young Lucille Ball broke and needy, the reason she had to struggle financially at the beginning of her career. She quickly put her brilliant mind to action. Records show that this Hollywood royalty first took her destiny move to Los Angeles to see how she could put her artistic dreams to reality. Lucille Ball was severely penniless. I starved, she later narrated in an interview. As a young girl, she was very backward and stubborn. Of course, vaudeville was one thing she was hoping to excel in, so she tried to break in. It turned out that vaudeville was becoming obsolete by the time she joined Hollywood, so the young talent had to diversify her creativity by exploring other areas, including modelling before she settled as a Hollywood showgirl, all driven by the need for food and survival. Is it true she ate food left over by diners in local cafes, and goes with a handbag with a plastic insert on dates in order to take home half-eaten steaks? That was how bad it was for this legendary icon. Lucille Ball may have lived a sort of street life and was associated with 23-year-old Johnny DeVita, who operated illegal booze in from Canada and was a known city gigolo. She befriended DeVita, who seldom manhandled her, as he tried to groom her personality around his gangster habits. She became one of the dangerous teenage girls while she lived with DeVita, so she could survive among his hoodlum friends. Lucille Ball, who said she once used Montana Ball and Diane Belmont as stage names before adopting the present name, hinted at how she scrounged to survive and took part in nude modelling and the infamous turning trick. She had a two-week show at the famous Siegfeld Follies, but was discarded and told, "'You've got no breasts. You can't dance.' Distressed, Ball said she briefly thought of working as a gun mole for DeVita, perhaps join Johnny on his liquor runs down from Canada, with the police chasing after us. After securing a job as a model, she scouted for acting jobs with little success until she took the advice of Leela Rogers, the mother of her close pal Ginger Rogers. And what was the advice? Lucille Ball was told that if she wanted to be a star within two years, she should get auditioned on the casting couch. That's the advice I gave my daughter, Leela Rogers was quoted to have said, and of course the rest is now history. Lucille Ball did not just become a popular Manhattan model, she became known at hot night spots such as the Cotton Club and had an affair with Albert Cubby Broccoli, the man that later produced the James Bond films and later with his cousin Pat DeKiko. Recall that DeKiko was rumoured to have been an associate of Lucky Luciano, Lucille Ball was said to have told friends that she wished to marry De Kiko and had noted that he taught her tricks in bed that himself may have learned from a Shanghai brothel. Reports say while she was dancing in Harlem a particular night, she had sensed danger before clutching a friend's hand and took to her heels from the venue. Her source of fear? The gunman later shot a man down. On another occasion at Manhattan's Kimberley Hotel, she was having her bath one evening in a bathtub when aimed bullets ripped through the soaked tub, and she miraculously escaped injury, but the room downstairs was flooded, the report said. After appearing in Eddie Cantor's film Roman Scandals, Lucille Ball set her eyes on Hollywood, appearing in more than 50 movies, at the time mainly in minor and uncredited parts, before being favoured as a comedic bit player. 
The same need for survival had led her to Columbia Pictures, headed by Harry Cohn, even though she had been told that Cohn was ruthless, self-centred and mean-spirited. He made it a duty that every female under contract to him must be loyal to him. For desperate Lucille Ball, staying under his condition was nothing compared to her gloomy condition. I've resisted so far, she was once quoted, but like other girls on his payroll, she was willing to obey his orders, and was even quoted to have said that the casting couch was better than the cold hard floor, referring to her deprived condition. After bedding Cone as part of the casting couch, Lucille Ball began to get juicy parts in movies, even though her career still struggled. She was regularly told by those she worked with that she does not have acting talent and would not be a good fit for sex symbol roles. For the same reason, Lucille Ball left Columbia for RKO Pictures, but her worst continued as she continued to lose juicy roles to rival and future pin-up star Betty Grable. She decided to up her game by distinguishing herself, first with her hair colour which she changed from blonde to red for the first time. There are opinions that Grable may have caused Lucille to stop pushing her way into movies and begin natural acting. The following year saw Ball creatively showcasing her wisecrack talent. During that period, she was linked to famous stars like Henry Fonda, Jimmy Stewart and Orson Welles, who she dated at different times. Her affairs with Milton Berle were quite remarkable, as he was the first to talk to her about doing a television show. While Lucille Ball was playing in the film adaptation of a Broadway play, Too Many Girls, she had seen 22-year-old Desi Arnaz, who before then had dated sexy Grable, Rogers and even Karma Miranda. She was instantly smitten by the handsome Desi as she watched him come on stage, not just for his broad shoulders and chest and his narrow hips, but for his moves. The two would later meet at RKO Pictures and like a mystery made into reality, Arnez did not hesitate to move in with her. Their love story was not a bed of roses either, because we heard of bitterness and brutal quarrels, though they were eventually and remarkably successful as lovers, husband and wife, and as career partners. I guess a lot of people would remember them today because of the I Love Lucy television show that made them superstars for about six years it aired. Their success was so pronounced that Desilu did not become a top producer. The couple soon acquired what was left of RKO Studios. I Love Lucy soon led to several others like the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour and the Lucy Show. Despite the adulterous storm that raged in that union, the two surprisingly held together for years, even though both became unfaithful to each other. With Arnez quoted to have once said that, Marriage is okay, but adultery is more fun. Just ask Lucy. Critics believe that some of the things that made their union stronger are how Arnez saved her career when she was blacklisted by the U.S. House of Representatives Un-American Activities Committee in 1953. Much younger Lucille Ball was a member of the Communist Party, something she did to please her beloved grandfather, even though she never thought of a possible political implication. And so, when the issue came up, that era she was dragged before the committee. Not too long after, the media got wind of the news and Lucille Ball's name went viral for the wrong reasons, so to say. Her promising career was on the line, as the same fate that befell other Hollywood blacklisted talents hunted her. Reports said Lucy was expecting a jeering studio audience when she appeared on the following recording of the I Love Lucy show, but Arnez saved the day with his creative oratory. Just before she entered the set, Arnez hit it off with the audience by sizzling them up for the show. And now I want you to meet my favourite wife, my favourite redhead. In fact, that's the only thing read about her. Even that's not legitimate, he was quoted. Many opined that the one reason Lucille Ball pulled off that one and stood strong career-wise was because she was truly loved by her audience and Desi would also help her project that idea to them. So while many talents suffered unthinkable distress from being blacklisted, Lucille Ball coasted to victory and moved on with her career, with the resultant effect being a stronger bond with Desi, her husband. Lucille Ball and Arnez's marriage produced two children, Lucy and Desi Jr., but still had to part ways in the 1960 divorce when she could no longer tolerate his alcoholism and illicit affairs with many women. Lucille Ball died in 1989 at age 77, about three years after Arnez's demise at the age of 69.
But hold on tight, because in our next video we unravel the shocking incident that left everyone stunned. Why did Faye Dunaway toss a cup of the unexpected in Roman Polanski's face? Let's find out.